What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, and I suppose good evening to a few out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this Friday into the work week, January 6, 2023. It is about 11.44 a.m. here in the uh, state of California where we're trying to dry out for one day. Got a couple more big storms coming up here uh, over the weekend and into next week. All right, latest activity here on the globe. Looks like a 2.4 into the California region and also a 1.6 up into the Alaska region. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here uh, from the USGS map in regards to uh, all the activity striking out here currently. Uh, there is that 2.4 right outside the Ridgemark area of uh, California, just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, that is a, uh, a section of the Creeping Fault, Creeping seg Segment of the San Andreas Fault that tends to see uh, some small microquake activity on any given day. But uh, a little bit happening there right now. Up into Northern California, we did see some activity as well. Uh, north of the uh, Cobb Mountain area, Always, obviously there's some movement down here uh, with the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Uh, but this specific activity, some movement this morning just after 4 o'clock or so, seen a 3.3. Uh, and then we've seen some uh, back-building earthquake activity here prior to the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, 3.2 at 24 kilometers. Now, I'm not 100% certain if this has been reviewed. It has. So it's a little odd uh, because it is in a region that, um, I mean, it's just pretty deep. It's prior to the subduction zone. Uh, but down below the oceanic crust there, it's a little odd one. Most of the time we'll see earthquakes roughly uh, uh, around 10 kilometers or so far as the, uh, the depth goes. But either way, a um, little bit of movement here in Northern California today. And it's, again, right at the southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust area. Uh, also 2.7 coming in within the last hour uh, along the coast range near the Bartlett Springs Fault. Good indicator of some regional pressure building up here into this part of the state. So we'll watch that pretty closely uh, throughout the day today. Uh, also off the coast of California, we've seen a 2.4 uh, near the San Simeon area. 3.6 kilometers deep, very shallow out there in the Pacific. Further down south, a little spotty movement as we look at the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Borrego Springs area, seen a little bit of swarming here today and over the past couple days, uh, no major movement. And the San Andreas Fault here, the southern segment looks pretty quiet for now. So we'll watch this area. It seems like the west coast starting to ramp up here uh, with the lacking of activity here along the western Pacific plate and adjacent plates, uh, including areas over here around Solomon Islands. Things look very calm and quiet for right now. So that teeter-totter effect swinging up here around the Pacific Coast, or the uh, Eastern Pacific Coast, uh, which includes, of course, California. Uh, up into the Gulf of Alaska, one earthquake here prior to the subduction zone. Got to watch these quakes here. That's normally a good indicator of some high strain built up, uh, similar to what we're seeing down here um, off the coast of Northern California. Uh, got a 2.8, 19 kilometers deep, again, just prior to the uh, subduction level. <clears throat> And some other typical movement up through the Cook Inlet area and um, around Anchorage. No major movement to take note of, though, in Alaska currently. On the Big Island, uh, things kind of lighten up last night, literally, uh, with the return of Kilauea Volcano yesterday. The eruption continued. Uh, latest earthquake shows a 2.0 near the Pahala area. Now, earthquake activity around Kilauea Volcano uh, has been relatively quiet um, over the last... Well, at least since about 6 o'clock this morning uh, and overnight, only seen a 2.0, uh, two 2.0s. Prior to that, most of the activity uh, was about 9 o'clock my time frame last night. Um, but things have kind of calmed down here. Uh, and the reason being, I don't think there's a, a lot of stress built up in this area now uh, to produce these earthquakes. Now, the eruption is still continuing. Uh, here's the latest look at the west vent inside the crater. Um, kind of spewing out some lava there, as noted. Uh, but we're not seeing that eruption-type um, activity that we are seeing last night uh, during the beginning stages of this new eruption, which um, yeah, it was paused for about a uh, almost a month time period. 
uh, stopped, the, uh, the eruption was halted back on the 10th of December. And a new eruption began r roughly within the same area uh, as the previous one. Let me see uh, what these guys are stating on their updates uh, right here. Um, so they have lowered the threat level from uh, orange and red down to a watch and a warning or uh, no, excuse me. They uh, yeah, it was an orange up here uh, right now. Currently, now we're back down to a watch. Sometimes these watches, watches and warnings can get a little confusing there. Uh, and what the difference is is that um, there's no imminent ash eruption, um, no structures threatened currently with this uh, minor activity occurring there at Kilauea volcano. So that's why they lowered. Uh, the threat level. Uh, Kilauea summit eruption continues and is confined to the crater, uh, of course, within HVO or within the uh, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Uh, HVO does not see any indication of activity migrating elsewhere on the volcano and expects the eruption to remain confined to the summit region. Uh, HVO, of course, they mentioned about their lowering. Uh, the initial high effusion rates are declining. And no infrastructure is threatened. HVO is lowering Kilauea's aviation color code from red to orange because there is currently no threat of a significant volcanic ash, ash emission into the atmosphere outside of the hazardous closed area. So um, just kind of watching it, seeing how it plays out. The latest, uh, let's see here, let me pull up a seismograph. I was just checking these out and their um, tilt meters aren't working still. But these seismograph stations, some of them are operable and some not so much. But if you look here, uh, over the past 12 hours, look at that. Not a whole lot of activity. So even when a volcano is erupting and we're seeing um, the uh, um, lava coming through, those uh, little cracks in the crater area, uh, that's just, um, you know, it's just kind of flown along, so to speak. We're not going to see a whole lot of earthquake activity unless we get some major uh, further magma intrusion from, from below or building up of strain or stress from that magma uh, somewhere below. But right now it's just kind of uh, free, uh, flowing freely, so to speak. So the earthquake activity is very minimal currently. There's not a whole lot showing up here uh, compared to the days past prior to this uh, new eruption. Uh, not a whole lot up here at Mauna Loa, um, earthquake activity looks very minimal in this region as well. Again, Mauna Loa not erupting, Kilauea volcano is. Um, both of these volcanoes, uh, their eruption halted right around the 9th or the 10th of December last year, last month. So we'll continue to watch it, continue to monitor it, and uh, report back on any uh, renewed changes that may take place. Rather interesting, though, I must say. Pretty crazy. All right, um, let's see what we got for uh, earthquake activity in other areas. Again, Western Pacific, pretty quiet. Uh, down here in the Fiji area, we did see a borderline 6.0, 505 kilometers deep for that 5.9, and uh, not a whole lot of activity further uh, upstream currently, but the deeper movement, again, will trigger... Uh, considering that's almost a, almost a six-pointer, somewhat of a large earthquake uh, in the area and deep. Should watch this area of the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Trench for some further movement. Now look at the EMSC model here. Not a whole lot going on. We did see some activity, it looks like, around the North Island, New Zealand. Uh, 4.2. couple threes in there as well. Very minimal activity across the Indonesia region today. Uh, again, most of the activity over here, Eastern Pacific, an adjacent plate here of the Nazca, uh, Nazca plate region. South America showing uh, quite a few fours and some other quakes uh, into the South America region here. Looks like it's up on to the uh, Peru area. A couple fours kicking off there. Relatively uh, shallow within this region. One deep earthquake down south yesterday uh, underneath the... Uh, yeah, where are we at here? Underneath the Argentina region, 
down there 191 kilometers into the subduction zone. South Sandwich Trench did see a 5.1 about uh, 9 o'clock last night and uh, very minimal activity throughout the Atlantic and the rest of the world. So we'll watch the West Coast today. Uh, things appear to be lighting up here in the area. Now across the inland regions here of the North American Plate, things starting to kick back up again around the Texas area, Oklahoma, Midland area. I'm all seeing some earthquake activity this morning and overnight. And of course, we do have uh, quite a few oil fields and oil wells out here, wastewater injection disposal sites uh, out there amongst the land of Texas, and I'm sure Oklahoma up here as well. Uh, up around the Yellowstone area, looks like a little spotty movement, well, kind of stretching across into portions of Idaho as well. That's on the Idaho side. What do we got here? About 10 earthquakes being listed here in Yellowstone. Uh, let me give a real quick glance here at the Yellowstone overview. And these are the seismographs. The Yellowstone caldera is in the black line. Yellowstone Lake right here in the blue. Uh, not most of this activity looks like it was from yesterday uh, kicking off. There's a couple of the readings there across the area. Uh, that was noted on the USGS map. But over the past couple hours, things seem to be uh, fairly mellow currently. Colorado, I've got one earthquake outside of the Newcastle region, 2.5. That one coming in uh, just about 9 o'clock or so this morning, 10 kilometers deep. Looks like uh, maybe one person felt it out there. Don't really see too much activity out there in the Colorado region, but occasionally we do get some earthquakes out there. Alrighty, what else we got? Uh, space weather movement. Of course, we had the X flare last night. X 1.2 was not earth directed. It was kind of uh, over here on the southeastern limb uh, facing away from Earth, but that sunspot region is now currently. Uh, well, rotating and within a pretty good view here of uh, being able to see the magnetic structures of this massive sunspot. Uh, also, this regional sunspot here has grown fairly nicely uh, in the last 24 hours, grown pretty uh, fairly fast. So we'll watch these couple sunspots here. I think we have another good shot of seeing some further strong flaring from 3182. Now the current threat level, 99% chance for a sea flare. 45% chance for an M flare and elevated, <clears throat> excuse me, 20% chance for an X flare. So things are cracking and pop, popping a little bit here on the uh, solar flare charts. Now the most recent data here shows that elevated conditions here, uh, indicating here on the chart that uh, things are getting more unstable, unstable in terms of the... Um, the magnetic structures there with the uh, sunspots. We'll watch that. Definitely seeing a pretty good uh, uptrend. Latest activity shows an upper sea flare. Again, last night, next 1.2 coming in. Uh, was not earth directed, but with these sunspots in uh, fairly good, uh, fairly good position here at Earth, we should be watching those pretty closely. And of course, this massive one as it comes into view, 3182. I'm sure we're not done with that sunspot <clears throat> at all. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Got a little break in the rain today uh, before another big storm this weekend it is knocking on our door already. Uh, got just some scattered showers coming in tonight. But uh, if you look here on the model, things really ramp up again here for us uh, on Saturday. <clears throat> and even a bigger storm. I think this one here is going to be bigger than the one that we've seen uh, over the past couple days, uh, some impressive rainfall rates here, uh, here in the Sacramento Valley and Butte County, Chico area, Redding, uh, all looking to be soaked pretty, uh, fairly good, fairly nicely, a good soaking once again, but uh, the ground out there is really soaked itself. I don't know how much water, more water it can soak up, but uh, we definitely need that rainfall and it's coming. There's a, a pretty good considerable amount of precipitation in the forecast uh, let's just go to this uh, precip map here real quick 
and show you guys the total accumulated rainfall rates over the next couple days. Uh, as you can see, Monday is going to Saturday. Let's see, Saturday, Sunday, and into Monday, this is going to be the total rainfall rates here. Looks like up around oh potentially six, seven inches or so, maybe more in certain areas here in the northern Sacramento Valley. Uh, and then after Monday storm, we got further storm systems coming behind that. Uh, looks like potentially around the 20th time frame, things are going to start drying off a little bit, drying out a little bit here uh, with the storm system shifting. The storm track, I should say, shifting up north and away from northern California for a little bit. But uh, still, that's some impressive rainfall totals here over the next uh, oh, 10 days or so. Looking at some, uh, those are some good rates on top of everything that we just seen. Uh, so our lakes are uh, filling up, reservoirs are, rivers are running high. And uh, this is going to only contribute to further potential flooding here in Northern California. But we'll cover that uh, in a pr another update. Till then, uh, have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Friday night coming up. I don't know if I'm going to barbecue tonight or not. Probably not. I'll probably wait for the storm tomorrow to come in, and then I'll barbecue. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Take care. Stay safe out there. And definitely watch the uh, West Coast, South America region. Definitely showing some heightened activity here today. While the Western Pacific is taking a little break. Not entirely, but uh, definitely not seeing any large-scale swarming or any large-scale activity out there uh, along that area of the world. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. Stay safe, folks.